Good. You know, we, we always, with, with everything that you're wanting to create, it can be in one of three places. So, you know, it can be in flow. It can be stuck or uh, oscillating. And those are really the, the, only, the only three options there are. Now, we all desire to have our choices in, in flow. And there's varying levels of flow. Many of us go, but it's not moving fast enough. You know, as long as it's moving, that's, that's a good thing. You know, sometimes you can't control. Sometimes, uh, has anyone experienced uh, when, you're, when you're out there and you're going for it? No, that's called oscillation. <laughs> uh, that's what also someone asked, uh, Karen asked, have you noted, ever known anyone's been all three? Well, the definition of oscillation is when you're stuck and then in flow, then stuck and then flow. That's the definite definition. And so, so flow, has anyone experienced the opposite where it's, it almost seems like it's going too fast? You know, it's like, ah, you know, look at this thing. It's holy moly, slow down. So you can have different vari variations of, of how fast something is flowing. And sometimes, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes we're always trying to find the middle ground. So, hey, so today we're going to talk about manifesting what you love. And uh, it's a very important topic to me. I, I would put it up there in one of the most important topics because manifesting itself is a, is a process of taking the invisible and making it visible, making the, the, you know, the volatile fixed. So you know, the, the process of, of turning thoughts into things or manifesting uh, starts with what's going on uh, in, your, in your mind. You create it in your mind first. And once you've created it, you've observed it, you've visualized it, you've witnessed it, then you, you bring it into this reality. And th those two aspects are always there. We're, we're always creating first in the invisible. In fact, everything in nature uh, is created in the invisible. All desires originate in the invisible, in the, in the field. And then we take action to, you know, to bring that into, into this reality. And so the, the process is very predictable. In fact, we're always manifesting our thoughts into things. In fact, we, we can't turn it off. The, the key is to learn how to harness this and to actually use it to, to create what you love and to create what it is you want. So in order to do this, I want to make sure that we get across some basics today, some absolute basics. For me, I was manifesting, but I was manifesting in an oscillating pattern, consistently oscillating. I would go towards what I want only to then find myself pulled back. So I would find my current reality as, as this. I would have times when I felt like I was in total motivation. My desired reality was here. And then sometimes I would push through this and I would get to the desired reality, but I would find myself to be in the exact same energy that I was to begin with and create another desire that I want to go for. Does that make sense? And, and, that, and that's what would happen. So I would break through, I would push through, I'd get there. And all the problems started from back here. That's the, that's the key, is your current reality is where it all happens. I'll tell you a quick story. I, I was so stressed out, actually. I was so stressed out. I had, uh, I had two, I had three gyms, two two hair salons, a digital marketing agency, an education and speaking uh, company. Uh, I had started Magnetic My. I had all of these things going on. I think at the time I had just over 50 employees and I was making millions of dollars. I was traveling the world. I was in Singapore and then Malaysia the next week and then you know, going to the United States. And I was, I was out there. I was given my gift and I was going for it. And I came home from one of these trips and I was exhausted. I was just so, so, so exhausted. I had all of these things going on and I, and I arrived home to this huge tax bill and I just wasn't prepared to it. And it was, 
hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so I had this huge tax bill. And because I'd been on a plane, I think I'd come home from Singapore. So it was a, you know, a long overnight flight. I came home, you know, Harriet was stressed out about stuff. There was, there was so much going on. And uh, I remember going, wow, look, I've got, I've got all this, these things. And so I, I just went, I need to go for a walk, try to ground myself, get some energy back. So I, I go for this walk and I'm, I'm sitting down, you know, in this beautiful part of the, the Gold Coast. And uh, there's these two, two older guys, I think, you know, they, they were retired. So, and they, they came along and, and, you know, they were laughing. And I was like, oh, look at these. And in the moment I judged them. I went, oh, look at these, you know, sort of homeless people. They were, they were just, uh, they just looked completely homeless. They didn't have any money. And it, it was like a Tuesday morning and they were, they were out just, just doing it. And so I kind of judged, I was like, well, look at these, these people, they, you know, they're not retired. They shouldn't be doing that. So they're, you know, they're working age. So I judged them. I judged them. And, and, uh, and as they came, they decided that, where I was sitting was the right place for them to, you know, fish and, and cast their lines out. And so, so there, there they are and they're casting their line out and they start chatting and laughing. And then their, their, their chatter was, I'm so glad that I'm no longer, and they, they called it a, uh, a desk jockey, a desk jockey, like a, you know, like the, a person who's riding their desk all day. And they start saying, oh, I'm so glad I'm not that anymore. And, and I start listening to them and I realized just how happy these two were. You know, they were so happy. They were out fishing. They didn't have, they didn't look like they had much money or, or anything, but they were just so happy. And there I am, right, sitting in the same reality as them, making millions of dollars with, you know, gyms that needed more um, members and hair salons. I think we had a manager quit the week before or something. And, you know, a digital marketing agency with like, you know, just, just so much going on. And I realized in that moment, I just, and I just went, what the heck am I doing? What is all this for? Because it's certainly not for me. You see, it's not for me. There I am and going and doing all this travel and all these things. And I realized that my whole end result was not even what I loved. And I see this and I hear it as we're, as I'm helping people create is they want the next promotion or I want this thing. And, and it's like their, their desired reality isn't something that they would love. In fact, what they've done is they've gone, well, this current reality is a big problem. And the solution to this is going to fix this. True? Is it, and they go, that's a, so, so for me, when I, when I sat there, I realized that everything that I was doing was not from a place of, I love it. What was it? It was from, I'm going to show you world. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how freaking amazing I am. I'm going to have more businesses than anyone else. I'm going to make more money. I'm going to put on more events. I'm going to have more people. And, and all as I was doing is I had, as I had seen, I'd seen Tony Robbins and I just thought to myself, this is my whole hours. I'm just going to beat him. I'm just going to beat him. That was all I was doing. I'm just going to beat him. I'm going to put on more events. I'm going to get to more countries. I'm going to go, 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 go. And I was missing it. Does that make sense? I'll show you. I said, I'll show you. Look how many businesses I have. Look, you've only got one multi-million dollar business. I got eight. And even if you read my first book, I even say it. I'm like, got eight businesses. Like I was so obsessed about it. And so here's what I realized is that this setup was meaning that I wasn't creating what I love because I didn't, you know, I didn't love the current reality. Does that make sense? And every time I was thinking, well, when I get that, but I wasn't conscious of it. Does this make sense? I wasn't conscious of it. So what I want to call this, I want to call this, and I'll change, I'll change colors. I want to call this a negative, a negative vision, a negative vision, a negative manifestation. 
you see, how many of you think that you have negative goals, but you don't think they are? That, and a, by definition, a negative goal is a goal that's designed to resolve a way you feel incomplete. You see, a negative vision is a goal that is designed to solve a way you feel incomplete now. Many people have negative visions. Does this make sense? Many people have, have negative visions. I'm going to get that because this is wrong. And most of us don't know. I'm going to get that because this is wrong. The whole seed of the vision is because there's something wrong here. And it leads to two things, okay? The first one, it leads to someone having to always put the next desired reality out in advance. They can never, ever finish. So they always put another goal out, another goal out, another goal out, another goal out. Who's done that? Never satisfied. Who's done that? You have to keep putting another one out, another one out there. The other thing that it does is, is as soon as they move a little bit towards it, they stop. Then they move back. And then they stop. Then they move forward and they stop. And this is when it, I see this in weight loss uh, a lot. So, so someone's annoyed at how much weight they have on their body. And they go, oh, I'm annoyed. There's too much weight here. I don't like that. So they go, right. Not drinking, um, only eating, you know, healthy food. Going to go to the gym every day. And they go, and then they start to feel good. They shrink in a little bit. Some of that weight's been used up because they haven't had as many calories. They go, oh, this feels good. So guess what? Where's the motivation? Stops. Because they don't have that pain anymore. So they stop. They come on back. I see this in money as well. I'm broke. Oh, they go for it. I'm going to make sales. I'm going to go for it just to get out here. Oh, well, now I'm good. And then they stop. You see? So I see these two patterns. Then they both are actually oscillating. One is, is the one that I did is I just kept on putting another thing out there. And, and, and the reason why that I had to keep putting another thing out there is I never learned how to be satisfied. I never learned to be satisfied because it wasn't really about being satisfied. It was just, it was just out there. And then the other one, you know, is, is I went, you'd see people, they start, then they got to stop. You see? So it, it comes down to this one thing. And that is your current reality being completely in love and satisfied now. So I want to ask you, how scared are you of being completely satisfied now? Like, if you actually think about it, like, how much does it worry you? There's people on here like me that the thought of being satisfied is very risky. They've never allowed themselves to be satisfied. Completely satisfied. You see? Yeah. Right? We're, we're actually worried. If I was satisfied, well, who would I be? We're so defined as a person that doesn't have what they want that we're actually scared of satisfaction. Others are the complete opposite. They're so happy to be satisfied that they don't know what they want to create or why they'd want to create anything. And they get lost in this weird idea that, oh, well, I'm satisfied, so I don't need to create. Isn't that what you said, Chris? I'm satisfied. Well, you know. And so there's this beautiful middle ground 
where you're so in love with life, so satisfied, and inside that satisfaction is the creation process of, of creating more for no reason other than you'd love it. Does that make sense? For no re I just would love that, but I was already satisfied. And this is, this is what I want us to work on a little bit today. Does it sound good? All right. So I've got a little exercise I wrote up, so I won't share my screen. It's just a, a Word doc. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you through it. And you, you, we're going to use some open-ended questions to, to sit in. And I was just doing this. I think I told you uh, at the beginning, I just did a huge meditation. And so I did this huge meditation and it was, you know, amazing. I was sitting in my, uh, my Tesla chamber and, uh, and I came out of it and I wrote this down for you guys. So first time, first time taking it, but it's, um, it's really cool. It's really, really cool. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect into your heart, your super conscious, your field, and we're just going to feel the moment. We're going to choose the end result of just loving and being so satisfied with life now. We're going to then start asking some open-ended question. And here's, here's one of them that we're going to ask is, what are all the possible ways that I can have this feeling? What are all the possible ways? Yeah, it's a good question. Someone says, how can I be satisfied if I'm overweight? What belief? system are you running that overweight's a problem if you go back a couple hundred years overweight was beautiful what what are you running see think about that what's what is it that what is it that you're running uh that that is allowing yourself well how could i possibly be that can you see your conditioning how could you not be what other option is there What other option is there? See, the idea that we would uh, that we would we would need to be annoyed at it in order to change it is a problem. How about we're completely happy with it and we're still choosing different things? See, see what I'm saying. So I'm not saying uh, that that's what I, that's the end result that you're looking for. What I'm suggesting is there's no reason why you can't be in love with it, except the reasons you're holding on to. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the question. So we're going to choose the end result of a life I love and really feel it. We're going to ask ourselves, what are all the possible ways that I can have this? We're going to notice what comes. We're going to write some things down. Like what, what are all the possible ways that I just have a life I love right now? Everything I love, like totally satisfied. Then we're going to ask a different question, which is, what would I love to create to feel this even more? What would I love to see this? To feel it even more, to expand it. And I was sitting, I was sitting there, I was meditating today, and I was going, what would I love to create to feel this even more? Like what would be exciting to create more of this? Not that I'm unsatisfied with what I already have, but I'm, I just want to feel more. I want to create more. What else cool, fun things could I do? You know, and going, what is all that? What was all that? You know? And then I want you to notice what comes to you. We're going to repeat this with one of the, uh, the four choices, the core choices. And then I'll allow you to do it with the other choices as well. So who's excited about this? This is brand, brand new. I, I downloaded this. This, uh, this, is, this is less than an hour old, this process. It's brand new. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send across the, uh, the instructions here, and we're going to do it. There's the instructions. Did everyone get those instructions? Oh, everyone's typing in. Just create the money, Sajada, create the money. You know, do it. There's the instructions. I've written them in twice there, so I hope you guys have got them. Um, I haven't made a document because I only just made this up. <laughs> it's brand new. 
Uh, it's brand new. So we have some fun with it. So we're going to you do one of our core choices, okay? So, uh, hey, by the way, how cool is this board? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, playing it really cool. Like, yeah, I know how my board works. Actually, though, every moment I'm like, all right, this is so cool. <laughs> all right, back to being cool and calm with my new board. Okay, so um, the, the four core choices, hey? Uh, they are the predominant creative force in your life, um, a life I love, uh, health and vitality, and uh, I don't see your face, guys. You're all on audio, Diane. You're just on audio. Um, so uh, true nature and purpose, life I love, uh, predominant creative force, health and vitality. I, when I designed this, um, I'm, I decided we would do these on the core four. But if you're, a, if you're already, you know, advanced or past that, then you might want to do this process on another choice. Okay. I, I don't really mind. I'm still uh, enjoying the creation of this, this process. So uh, can everyone uh, type in a number one when you've chosen which of your choices you want to work on? And if you're brand new and you haven't done any of the introductory sessions, uh, you'll get choices there. Uh, but, but for now, let's all just choose one. You don't need to type it in. Just, just give me a number one when you've, uh, when you've done it. Great. Great, great, great. So just make sure it's a, it's a true choice, you know. Um, a true choice is something you can have now and you can expand on. Uh, you know, a, a, the, the true choice, there you go, Edison. The true choice is, is not a negative vision. So I just want you to start off by uh, uh, choosing a true choice. Well, there's going to, Sujata's got a good question. Uh, can I choose to create multiple things within a life I love? A absolutely. This is an orientational choice. There'll be many things in it. Uh, and it, it's our job to pick out of all the things involved in a, in a life we love and, and, and bring it down to choices, you know? So it's, one, it's why it's one of the core choices because the, the way that I, that I like to explain why a life you need to start with a life you love and then bring it into choices um, is that that's not your choice, is it, Diane? That's not what you're going to work on. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I just saw that come in, Diane. I, I, I've got some coaching if that's what your choice was. If it was just a comment, all good. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, so when you choose a life you love, uh, or you, you know, you choose joy, I can see Karen's question, you choose, choose that, you, you then need to bring something big down into the, the aspects that, that are going to give you that joy so that you can actually, you know, get into action and create it. Your superconscious needs to know, well, what are we, what are we going to do to have that joy and create more of it? See, you know, um, if you don't, if you don't bring it into uh, into some sort of clarity on on focus, it's like a uh, orchestra warming up. Anyone can imagine what an orchestra would be like warming up. Horrible, right? They're all they're all just right. But when you get a conductor, the conductor says, oh, we'll have some of this, turn this one up, and now we'll start with that and play this, you see? There's structure. So you can have all of the different instruments, but you might not want them all playing all the time. Does that make sense? So in, in your life creation process, you get to say, well, I'm going to choose this. I'm going to have a piece of this. I'm going to have a piece. You want a bit of harmony if you just if you just stay in the big life I love. So, so Diane... Um, when we have choices, I'm not, I think you're relatively new. There's a few Dianes, but I think I've got the right Diane. Uh, there's an introductory um, uh, session that will help you to really get good choices. One of the most important things when it comes to choices 
is that we 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 don't want to put anything into our end result or into our choice that is designed to compensate for a place of lack. Okay, they need to be pure, true choices. So uh, if you haven't been able to get to the introductory session yet, I'd prefer that you choose one of our core four, which are, would a coach type these in for me? Someone who's just got them, got lots of, lots of people in the certification here. So they are a life I love. I choose a life I love. I choose health and vitality or a healthy and supportive body. Uh, number three is a true nature and purpose. I choose to live my true nature and purpose. And then uh, number four is uh, to be the predominant creative force in my life. Yeah, cool. So, so anyway, uh, so I see Sujata, I don't really know how that's relevant to your choices. So, so you said, hey, you know, people, other people, I don't, I don't care what other people say. They might say they're extravagant or silly, whatever. I would, I'd like you to notice the aspect of you that even needed to bring that into the conversation and go, why did I need to even bring that up? Because there'll be, there's stuff there for you. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Okay. So, um, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, where, where's my little instructions? Thanks for typing those in coaches. I really appreciate it. Um, which is good. So we're gonna do. We're gonna go through the, these steps here. Okay. So the the first step is uh, is we're going to close our eyes, connect to our heart, and we're just gonna feel the moment. Then we're gonna step into the choice. Okay. Uh, so if you if you're ready, uh, just follow my instructions, and I'll take you through it. Everyone's got their choice written down, a nice, clear, clean, focused choice. Uh, really good. So let's, uh, let's close our eyes and just take a, a few big breaths and just allow yourself to connect to yourself, to your heart, to the field, and just set the intention to connect to your heart. Just take a moment, notice where your focus is and just do your best to focus on your heart, connect to the moment, connect to yourself. So now I want you to step into a reality that you're living that choice. So I choose the end result of. And just choose it. I choose the end result of, and it feels like, and just, and just, and it, how does it feel to have that end result? So I choose to have a life I love, or I choose health and vitality. How does it feel? How does it feel? Really allow yourself, well, how does it feel? What images come to you? What feelings come to you? Maybe sounds, smells, sights. What really comes to you when you're in this end result? How does it feel? I choose the end result and it feels like. What are all the possible ways you could have this end result? Allow yourself to go into possibility. What are all the possible ways you could have this end result right now? Just notice them, allow them to come to you. They might come fast to you, they might come slow. What are all the possible ways you can be living this end result? What could you do that you haven't thought of? And when you're ready, open your eyes and start writing some down. 
Start writing some down. Notice what's there, start writing them down. What are all the ways you could have this end result? You can type them in if you like, but as soon as we end Zoom, that, that will all go. So maybe you wanna write them down. What are all the ways that you can have that? How can you do that? Allow yourself to go into possibility. What are all the ways you can have that? You might want to tune back in, stay in your heart and ask it again. I did. I spent a long time on this. What are all the ways I could have that now? How can I have that? Mm. Okay, so whatever you've got down is great. I want you now to close your eyes Stay back in your heart, close your eyes, get back into your heart, get back into the moment, get right back there, right back where you are. Right there, back in that end result. And now I want you to ask your superconscious, what would I love to create to feel this feeling even more? What would I love to create to feel this feeling even more? Close your eyes, go back into that place. What would I love to create to feel this even more? What would I love to create to feel this even more? And let it come to you. When you're ready, open your eyes and write it down. What else would you love to create to feel this even more? What else? Don't limit yourself. I see you, Peter. You said you typed in, I think I'm next. I don't think you are. What else would you like to create to feel this even more? What else could you create? Some of us are deleting what's coming to us. You're definitely getting answers. What else would I love to create to feel this even more? What else could I do to expand this? When you're ready, um, fill me in. How's this going for you? See, Sarah says, I'm going to do this every day. Someone might be deleting what's coming to them because they're scared of having too much. They're worried about it. They're, they weren't allowed abundance as a child, so it's scary. Who knows? Yeah. No, abundance is great. How's this going, guys? How are you feeling with this? This is, this is the moment. This is when you get into it, is when you allow yourself to go, well, I already have it. 
And then what else would I love? Can you guys feel, give me some feedback on this. Can you feel the energy of the creation here? Yeah, there's no what I've already got it. I'm already feeling it. And I'd love more. I'd love to have this, but I'm already there. I'm already fine. I'm already good. You see, this is when you get into this slipstream of creation, tears of happiness. Yeah, I love it, Karen. This is this is the this is the slipstream. Yeah. So high. This is when when the alchemists say you you get into the higher vibration, which has been misconstrued a little bit, meaning you 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 see it from the higher perspective. I love it, Stefan. Nice. That's all right, Lisa. It's recorded. Well, that's just a judgment. It's way too big. Big for who? Big for, for whom? No, I'm not denying that's how it feels. I'm just uh, coaching you through the truth. Mm, it's so good. It is. So, so I was sitting there, I was doing this meditation and I was going, oh, I'm so grateful for my house. I'm so grateful for my business. I'm so, and I was like, oh, and I had this little thought pop in like, well, what am I supposed to do now? And I went, create more of this, Duncan. Come on, let's have more of this. What can you do to have more of this? Create more. Why would you want to create more, says the little me? Because it's fun. It's what life's about, creating what's fun, what's joy. But not creating in a sense that it's going to be overwhelming because that would lose the moment. So I want to ask you, when you do this, when you think about this, what stops up for you? What steps up? What's that, Paula? Ah, no. So, so Paula, that's, it's, a, it's a good question. And the question is coming from a place of never experiencing being completely satisfied and still desiring to create. It comes from it. And it's a, it's a very great question because our whole, most of us in society, we've only ever been told to create based on a problem based on lack. True. And so the idea of, oh, well, if I already have it, why would I do it? Isn't that just creating more stress in my life? Well, no, you've already got it. You're not going to lose it by creating more. So remember in the, the current reality and the desired reality, then you have an identity and you have an identity. Now, Let's say that your current reality is a little bit of money and your desired reality is a lot of money. Or let, let's say, you know, that your current reality is, is unhealth. That didn't write very well. Unhealthy. And then your desired reality is healthy. These aren't equal. Just like a blank canvas isn't equal to the finished result. But the world-renowned artist is a world-renowned artist here and a world-renowned artist here. The ID, the feeling, the beliefs, that is equal to the feelings and beliefs here. So we're getting into the moment, we're experiencing, feeling it, being it, and then we're just choosing. We'd prefer to move that to there or that to there. This here is the creative tension, the creative structure. And then this here is what we're doing with the recode to ensure there's no personal uh, or identity resistance. True is to feel it first.